We stopped for donuts. I'm recording, by the way. We stopped for donuts on the way back. Check out this cross section. Oh, yeah. Check out Mama this. White. Okay, we are on our way to the Bonsai Museum, but it's closing time, so we're trying to keep a good pace going so that we get there in time. I'm just gonna film the entire time because I don't want to fish my phone out of my pocket and waste time doing that. I'd rather just do one long continuous take of everything I see and enjoy nature as it goes. I miss having pockets. And Andrea misses having pockets. <laughs> They're fake! The fake pockets are bad. My five is very nice. Let's speed up to catch up to Lynette. You can take our mask. I have a mask and I have an extra one for you. Here you go. Be the change you wish to see in the world. This way to bonsai. Look at all those pretty bonsai. These are bonsai. Yeah. Look at this one over here. Oh, that one has flowers. Oh cool, its roots grew through its pot. That's what it says down here. We only have three minutes? I wandered all over this place. This place is huge. When, it, when people were working here. There were a lot of museums in here. Ooh, a tiny little fruit. I wonder if it came from that tiny little tree. I love the tears. That's so cool. They actually moved the original buildings from Seoul. Oh, the fort! The fort in Japan. Oh, okay. They moved them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was a museum. It is a museum. I didn't catch it before. It's a lot of them. It's a living history museum. It's really active. So you were there? Yeah. You were a dope. Oh, sorry, what? That's a specific job. Do you mind if I get in your face and record yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, that's good. Usually you okay. Oh, I love the rocks. Those add character. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. Tashio oh, Kawamoto, right son of Bonsai right Master right Tokichi Kawamoto, was on a mission to bring the practice of bonsai to the masses by using less expensive, more widely available plant materials. Kawamoto created landscape compositions, he did Saikai living landscapes. He hoped that Saikai, Saikai would allow anyone the opportunity to experience the benefits he himself claimed from caring for tiny trees. We are fortunate to have a psyche designed by Kawamoto that he created in Seattle during a private 1979 workshop with Seattle bonsai pioneers. True to form, large forest he composed by grouping young juniper whips and planting them in a simple brown tray with locally collected rocks. Now over 40 years later, the shoots have matured into beautiful trees in the full landscape that we see now. This evolution underscores Kawamoto's philosophical assertion that quality bonsai can be constructed out of humble and inexpensive materials. I love this one. I like that one. That is cool, huh? It really looks like, like I can imagine tiny anime characters running through the rocks here. Is it? Like, it's like a 30 minute drive. It's amazing. Alright, let me check out this one with the hollow. I'd love to shrink down and pass through that. That'd be fun. And this one has a fern. Cool, this one is a redwood. It's a very unique specimen, apparently. Amazing. Looks very cute, and I love the ferns at its base. It reminds me of that giant tree in the middle of the Flying Fortress in Hayao Miyazaki's uh, Castle in the Sky. I'm sure this picked up some of your conversation earlier, which I think was supposed to be private. Do you want me to like... Okay. Do you want to check those ones out or are we walking past them? I'm just, I'm interested in the warehouser building because... Trying to keep the other visitors off camera. It's the architecture. It's very brutalist in getting that Mm-hmm. Brutalist. Brutalist means oh, the oh, the warehouse right angles and oh, I see. yeah, it's like evergreen. Evergreen is meant to Ooh. Sort of sink into the environment, but it's it's brutal. This tree reminds me of Hella, that one goddess who's dead on one side and alive on the other side. Oh yeah, or Hell, she's also that. Yeah. There's multiple different. Uh, this is a night from 1957. This tree's been here. Oh no, he's an army. Yeah, and you know, the fact that they Oh, wait, are... Inazuni. Okay, <laughs> my bad. I, I, I guess I'm... Do you mind wiping like off my glasses for me? I don't have two I was, hands. I was, I was about to say, like, oh, it's an army of us like that. Oh, this one might have dew on it. I cannot wait. is pretty. Do you work for the museum? I do. That's cool. So are you cleaning it off or watering it? I was watering it and I got some of the dirt spilled off so I was trying to... Cool. Do you mind being on camera? Right now you're off camera. Okay. Do you want to tell me about some of your favorite bonsai and some of the coolest stuff you've seen here? Um, well, you know, my favorite bonsai changes from day to day and hour to hour. So uh. label on any one tree. What do you think is the most interesting bonsai here? Probably the large Tomoto maple, it's a super interesting story, uh, one of our older trees, yeah, it's been through a lot. Cool. So it's kind of like the Mona Lisa, it's not the, it's not the painting that makes it special, but it's what it's been through, historically. Ah. Okay, I gotta check that one out, is that in that exhibit over there? Towards the end, it's the biggest one you'll know when you see it. It's All right. Cool. I can't wait to read its story. Is it on one of these plaques here? Yeah, 
It is actually. There's a big sign next to it. Awesome! I can't wait. Come on, guys. We gotta go see the giant one at the end. Oh my God! We will just naturally follow along around here. Yeah, she's thirteen. Okay. Um, I don't know American. <laughs> you don't know? So, and and, and a part, partially, I don't know Canadian. Oh, you're partially Canadian? Yeah. Oh. That's a The shore of Dead Crow like, Lake at the tip of Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. What appeared to be a small tree partially submerged in a bog was revealed upon excavation to be just a branch of a much larger tree pressed into the soil by snow. The branch had formed only small surface hair roots that were easily dug up by artists for collection. This tree rose from the dead as Lenz rescued it from the cold and brought it back to life as a bonsai. The artist named this bonsai the Christian Larch, reading into it a metaphor of redemption, its fluid trunk full of movement but lacking a direct point of focus, symbolized to Lenz the Christian who suffers before finding God. A path that takes them away from the center in youth, zigzagging about in midlife, reaching back to find their center in old age. This is from 1940. My glasses are fogging up. Since 1972, what does that mean? They train each other. Okay. So, a two line cascade. They were training that one for 40 years since 1940. Cool. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. How about me and Andrea both checking out this one? Uh, use yours. Mine's busy recording a long single take of us enjoying this museum. I love the fresh air. When I get home, I am going to eat food. <laughs> Do you want to say that on camera? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that might be the one at the very end, the big one with the story. I'm just extremely hungry. Can't wait to eat. <laughs> okay. Ooh, this one has tiny fruits. Oh. Little tomato-y doodads. Uh, Firethorn is native to north to western China, where it grows to be a medium-sized shrub that forms sprawling thickets. Both its English and botanical names refer to the sharp spines, blah blah blah, into classic upright bonsai. The deep blue glazed container creates a cool color to contrast from the scarlet berries. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say whether or not the berries are poisonous, but it's not well, like we're we'll gonna try out. them. <laughs> Andrea. Find out. No. Yummy, 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 yummy poison berries. I love it when moss sends those little uh, spore shoots up. Those little rhizome, not rhizomes, I forget what they're called. Imagine the rock and parasite. Yeah, I could see an alien coming out of that. No, parasite, the movie. Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. There's no aliens. <laughs> More parasites, actually. <laughs> Those parasite are cool. The anime. She's about parasites.
What time is it? Uh, is that what you asked? Uh, no, but it's 3.44. I thought you were asking me. Oh. Uh, I really love that jagged one that looks like shark teeth sticking out of the ground. Okay, I think this is the giant one that has a huge story next to it. Originally one of a pair of twin bonsai, this maple was imported from Japan in 1913 for exhibition at the seminal 1915 Panama Pacific Exposition in San Francisco, California. At the conclusion of the expo, the twin, the paired trees were separated. This one was purchased by Kanataro Demoto, who with his brothers owned 48 acres in Oakland at Demoto Brothers Nursery. By 1936, during the height of the Great Depression, the nursery fell into foreclosure. However, a bank representative handling the foreclosure fortuitously noted the importance of the tree to the family and allowed Kanataro, Kanataro to keep it. Kanataro then gave the tree on to his eldest son, Toichi, to care for his own nursery nearby. Toichi cared for the bonsai until 1942, when the family had to leave it behind following the President Roosevelt's Executive Order 9. It was 66, which forced them to leave their home and employ and employee under its own initiative, sending roots through its. No oh wait, an employee endure incarceration, home and endure incarceration. During that time, the bonsai survived with some help from a nursery employee. Sorry, a little bit dyslexic there. And under its own initiative, sending roots through its rotted wooden container into the soil below for its primary source of water and nutrients. After Demotos were allowed to return home, Toichi found the tree alive but in need of major pruning which he continued to carry out over the next several decades. Toichi also rebuilt the family nursery business, specializing in hybridization of azaleas, camellias, and other flowering plants, and was elected president of the California Horticultural Society. The bonsai was placed under the care of Pacific Rim Bonsai Collection on long-term loan in 1990 and generously donated to the Pacific Bonsai Museum by the Demoto family in 2015, 100 years after its debut in San Francisco. Due to its size, the Demoto never had a suitable bonsai container for more than 50 years of its life in cultivation. In 1999, curator David DeRoot met the owner of Kiln in Yixing, China, who was up to the challenge of making container for the tree. After 10 attempts, the kiln produced two usable pots. The best pot of the two was sent to the U.S. and at the time was the largest bonsai container ever imported to America. The repotting process required a large team of people and a forklift to lift the tree. In 2019, the Demoto Maple was selected for the inclusion of the project of 50 objects, an online visual and textual examination of 50 objects associated with the period of American-Japanese incarceration. The Pacific Bonsai Museum is honored to be part of this profound project. Our ongoing dedication to caring for this significant living artifact is how we honor the Demoto family's story and perseverance every day. Cool. So basically, this tree got to be big because some people were really evil and then its roots escaped. And then people loved it in spite of that evil that was ambient. And so it thrived even in harsh conditions. And then it represents a change that only occurred because of cruelty. But... I don't know. Well, it's only in this form that it's currently in because of cruelty, but it's only here today because of kindness in the face of cruelty. Because if it was left to rot, it would have just died, but it wasn't left to rot. It was cared for, but it wasn't cared for by an expert, so it got to be really huge. Now it's a chubby boy. Nothing. Some cool bonsai over here. Do you mind if I get a clip of that one behind you? I love how it resembles driftwood and fire, but it's living. I don't know if that's the intention, but I love it. This one looks like it's reaching to the heavens. See how all the leaves point straight up? That's kind of cool. This one reminds me of a monitor lizard for some reason. It's got a little stubby tail and kind of a Godzilla body. Oh, part of a necklace? Somebody left it. Okay.
Well, I'll put it back where they left it just in case. Just in case. Okay. And this one is also a chubby boy. I like it. It's cute. My glasses are fogged Ooh. up. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see all of this. <laughs> There's a. Uh, 350. 10 minutes. I think we're about halfway done. And if we speed through, we can make it. Ooh, this one. Twin C's. Hollywood Juniper Mia. And this one is. This one is cool. Okay. Ooh, check out this ferny one. Bald Cypress Banting. Self-taught bonsai artist Van Banting was one of the first American bonsai artists who chose to style North American plant material based on the way species appears in nature rather than in a triangular shape as traditional bonsai practices would have dictated. Oh. Cool. My glasses are fogged up again, but it's beautiful. If I had more time, I'd just sit here and stare at it, but I don't. I'm getting new glasses soon. I'm excited. Look how scuffed these are. That... She's just... It's not an exhibit, it's just an observation. <laughs> this one reminds me of Halloween. Ooh, and it's got a flower. It's dying. It's beautiful. Yeah. I want to hug this bonsai, but obviously I wouldn't do that. That would be... Plants do not like being touched. And bonsai artists do not like clumsy tourists touching their art. So, that's a double negative there. Oh, that's cute. Oh. Because somebody put their effort into painting a mural, dude. Oh, uh, maybe that. They could do a fountain with fluidized sand. Hey Andrea, you know how if you pump air through like a hot tub full of sand and you laminate the air, it can create like... This sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> it, it can create like fluidized sand, yeah. so the sand moves like, like a liquid. Sand. Yeah. Yeah, well it's not really quick sand because instead of sinking it pushes you up due to its density. What does swim in a swimming pool? Some people have done that. That sounds terrifying. But I'd love to see a fountain of sand. That'd be awesome. Like something straight out of a video game. This unusual hemlock was collected from an east area east of the Stevens Pass in the Washington Cascades. The hollow stump reveals that the original tree was considerably larger than the present bonsai. It was weakly rooted, however, in that it had sprouted between two large rocks, and at some point it fell across an adjacent hiking trail and was cut off near the base. The remains of the original truck decayed while a small, low branch grew up and became its replacement. Artist Patrick Anderson was fascinated by the images of age, drama, and the cycle of life that this small tree suggested, and collected it as a potential bonsai. So, this is the real show here. That hole right here at the base, that's the story. This little guy used to be part of a much bigger, became its own little character. And my glasses are fogging over. I might this just put them in my purse. Yeah, it's from Washington. So we need two Okay. You can poison somebody with Here, do you mind being videographer for a little bit? Okay. Here, put me on the camera. My glasses are tangled in my hair, and I'm just going to do away with them into my purse for now.
Okay. All right, where do we go from here? This is the end. We go out, unless you want to step at the bathroom while you have a chance. Do they have a sippy machine? I'm thirsty. Oh, right. I brought my own water. My problem is I'm hungry, not that I need to, I need to, I don't need to relieve myself. I need to defend myself. Ooh, look at those bonsai. They're huge. Just kidding. They're trees. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not that <laughs> You going to Warehouser or are we done? We're done? Okay. I think that's the exit. I think that they've made it mostly clean. Ooh, drinking fountain. Like a dork, I recorded myself at the drinking fountain. Like that, we will kick you out. So, leave soon. So now you got to see the bonds out. Mm hmm. They were very beautiful. I wish I had more time to just stare at that fern tree one, though. It was pretty. The big one? No, the one with the fern leaves. True. What's up that those are more impressive, but I guess it's just that there's no way. <laughs> I walked all over the place. You sure you don't want to go to Warehouser? I could do for a more adventure. I'm I'm probably going to want to go home soon. I'm hungry as hell, and I want to just cook myself something. Okay, that's fair. Just uh, settle in for the day. Did you eat any breakfast? Nope. <laughs> Look at that beautiful naturey stuff inside there. Did you all enjoy the Bonsai Museum? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yep, I wish I had more time, but we got here just as it was closing. But I got it all on here, so it'll last forever. Mm-hmm. Do you guys want me to cut out your um, contribution to the recording or no? Oh, are we being recorded? For posterity. Okay, what about you? Do you want me to cut you out? No, I don't care about it. Okay, cool. Oh, that's a wild bonsai. It's got a tiny little plaque. It might be a statue. Oh, it might be a sculpture of a bonsai. Okay, couldn't tell. First bonsai. Huh. Yeah, I doubt it's actually the first bonsai. It might have died on that rock. I don't know. I can't tell if it's actually a sculpture or not, but it would make sense if it was. Maybe it's like an aluminum cast of a bonsai. No, no. There's a story to everything, and you only know the answer that you only know the story for some things. But everything has a story. Oh, those are my rubber bands. Oh, or somebody's rubber bands. You could have dropped them on your way. Well, they might not be mine, but they are mine now. Maybe I dropped them on the way in. I wear braces that need rubber bands. Those are your bracelets. And so we think I dropped some on the way in, or somebody else with the same braces dropped them. Let me check, actually. There's an animal on the bag that tells you if it's yours. So let me see here real quick. Yeah, it's the same type. See how it says bear right there? That's how we can tell. 
in Japanese, bear is kuma. And there's a cute little song that goes boku wa kuma, 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 kuma. I like to hum it and be a dork to it because my Japanese teacher used to force us to listen to it. It was fun. French. Anything you want to say about your trips? Uh, it was good. Okay. I'm awkward on shit like that, so. <laughs> okay. Anything you want to say, Lynette? Uh, I don't know. I, th I like to look at the bonsai. They're beautiful. Okay. This, is a, this is a pretty campus here. Yeah. It is a pretty campus. Andrea, are you sure you don't want to explore it just a little bit, like up to the front gate? I think I want to go. It, You're hungry? Yeah. Don't forget I'm buying us all Starbucks after this. Okay. Okay. Um, God, it's so pretty. Imagine having an office there and then being told you're being rude. I know, that would be hell. Uh, All right, bye everyone. This has been a half hour at the Bonsai Museum. I freak out. <laughs> we stopped for donuts. I'm recording, by the way. We stopped for donuts on the way back. Check everything. out this cross section. <laughs> oh yeah. Check out Mama this. Light. Mm, check this out. This is yummy. Mm -hmm. This is one of the best fritters I've ever had. Mm. Mm. Anyways, I've got a band-aid Thank on my head. You. I'm not going to tell you why. Thank you. Anyways, I was going to pay. It was going to be my treat, but then I forgot to move money onto my card. So then Andrea was like, okay, it's my treat now. And I was like, okay. I just wanted to avoid the awkwardness. So yeah, that happened. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Cheers, I'm everybody. I'm for you to get over your eyes.